Oh, I think we're on there. Oh, well, hello, Coffee Time friends. How y'all doing tonight? I hope y'all are safe and warm. Let me plug in the microphone. Can you hear me better? Can you hear me now? <laughs> okay. Mama is not eating tonight. She's just, I don't know. She's on a hunger strike. No, Mama ate earlier. She didn't have, really have time to fill around with me tonight. I couldn't wait on But now let me tell you what she did. She cooked this wonderful meal. And it's one of my favorites. And I'm going to show you how you put it together. And you really don't need a recipe because you already know the recipe. Um, it was quick and simple. And really, the, the macaroni and a little bit of the meat is all she had to make. But here's what she did. So she made, hello there, Renee. How are you doing? And hello, Sheila. Let me tilt y'all down right quick, explain this wonderful meal. This is the Tupperware pasta maker. Y'all have heard us talk about it before. Um, she put this in the microwave for eight minutes. You get perfect noodles of any kind. Um, this was just spaghetti she put in here with water. She filled it up to where the little line over here is. Put uh, about a tablespoon of butter and a little bit of salt in it. And we just, she just left the water in it. So when I came in, I just put it in the microwave, heated it back up, and it's still perfect noodles look at that we don't cut ours up or nothing we did this old-fashioned way mama i hate to eat in front of you but i'm gonna do it that's perfectly all right i've done it i don't hate it bad enough not to do it <laughs> sorry about the noise not no sense of, no sense of you doing without just because mama said i've made supper and if you don't care, I'm going to go ahead and eat, which I have told you how many times, Mama? Maybe 10,000. Don't wait on me. Don't please. ever wait on me. It's mm -hmm. untelling. Uh, I'm late all the time. Exactly. You go right ahead and eat. And I'll eat when I get there. And this is what I'm having. This is, Mama, correct me, this is a Tyson mm -hmm. chicken tenderloin. Yeah. It's a We love these. We love these. They taste almost like homemade. Shawnee's used to have, huh? Yeah, they Southern tenderloins has got a little extra spice on them. They're not plain, plain. They don't. They're good. Mama, says, Mama thinks things are spicy. This, this is <laughs> good. It's just the time. We're not sponsored. This is just information for you. Uh, it's just the tenderloin with a little bit of spaghetti. And this is Mama made um, ground chuck, I'm sure, mm -hmm. and put prego. So this is not homemade sauce, but it don't have to be. Uh, it's just a Thursday night. Happy Thursday, everybody. Yeah. Happy Friday Eve. Can y'all believe it's almost the end of, almost the end of January already. So you put your noodles, you put your piece of chicken. You could do homemade chicken. We use uh, breast sometimes, sometimes tenders. You can use egg. Uh, Egg noodles, I sort of said not egg, but it is. Egg noodles, bow tie pasta, uh, panini, anything you want to use for the pasta. This is just happens to be spaghetti. Shawnee's used to have this and they call it Italian feast. And we I loved think of that it. Earlier. We loved it. And we would get it all the time when we would go there. And so now we make it homemade. And y'all know I don't do garlic, but Mama made this wonderful bread and I got a little brown when I reheated it because that's just what happens. But see, it was like that. She, all she done to this bread, and this is where she fixes my bread, and I think you eat it this yeah, way too. Yeah, I, I did too. It's just plain old sliced light bread, and it is a little darker, but that's my fault. And uh, put a little nature seasoning on it. I know that's, you know, some of y'all tell me that's not healthy, but it's healthier than garlic for me. And a little bit of parsley. It tastes wonderful. Butter and a little nature butter. seasoning. A little parsley. butter. And uh, nature seasoning and parsley, and it's wonderful. Now, it was prettier. Yeah. Uh, that was worse green instead of black, that parsley was. <laughs> That's sad. But I'm not going to waste that because it's just crunchy and it's good. It's like a crouton. Uh, and it's delicious. Mama, let me bless this. And um, you going to eat anything, Mama? I might eat about in a minute. I don't know. It's I've eaten earlier till okay. I was starving. Okay, Mama, mm -hmm. I didn't mean to starve you up. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this meal. We thank you for these precious hands that prepared it, dear Lord. We just ask you to bless it for the nourishment of our body, dear Lord. And Lord, just be with all the prayer requests that are turned in. Be with all those folks that have uh, had lost loved ones. And for those that don't have electricity still, dear Lord, and all the people out trying to get it back on for them. And just be with every need and every prayer request. In your, prayer, in your precious name we pray. Amen. So, 
I don't have to text this to tell you all how good it is. All I have to do is tell you, I know it's good because we have it a lot. Um, and in fact, I'm sure we've already had it on here. But this is a super quick and easy supper. So probably it took you, what, five minutes to brown the meat. Yeah, it didn't take long. And then pour a jar of prego over it. And the chicken takes, what, 15 minutes? Yeah, something like that. And the easy bake it. Don't easy it tells bake. you on the bag it's cord and water. And in this Tupperware pasta thing, it's seven minutes. Is what I use. Seven, seven minutes for every kind of pasta uh, I've ever put in it. Well, I think I put that eight because I used uh, cold water and you usually use warm. But it takes an hour to cold for the hot water to get in this kitchen. <laughs> The kitchen's far away from the hot water here, so Mama don't want to waste all that water getting hot water. Yeah, so it'll heat up fast. I think you're supposed to use cold water anyway. I just do the hot water because I'm impatient. Yeah. All right. But anyway, this is absolutely delicious. It's a quick, easy supper. It's better than a frozen dinner, and it don't take much longer to fix than a frozen dinner. So I highly recommend this. We have this on the regular, as they say, because it's delicious. And the chicken, the protein... I love the fried chicken by itself, but when you put it with this, the this prego or the meat sauce, and we do make homemade spaghetti sauce every blue moon, every once in a while. <laughs> Y'all know what blue moon, that's when there's two full moons in one month, they call that a blue moon. When people around here will say, oh, I do it once in a blue moon. I mean, it, it takes a while. It don't come around too often. So we do it every once in a blue moon. We'll have uh, homemade sauce. But we like the prego really well, and uh, so we use it a lot because it's quick and it's easy. Uh, and the chicken and the it's together is wonderful. Mm mm mm. So, just before we came on, we done a little reel, <laughs> and uh, you know the reels for thirty seconds. There's not a lot you can do in thirty seconds, and we really can't cook anything in thirty seconds. So we're doing hey mama jokes for our reels. Be merciful, and people. I didn't do good. <laughs> mama just didn't get the joke, but it was a cute little joke. Be merciful because we we're not professionals. This is really just us and we're not techno savvy and we would never probably do reels if oh. Facebook didn't want us to, you know, that's saying <laughs> do some reels. So anyhow, that's what we're doing because they like that and that keeps them pushing out your videos, makes you relevant, and it keeps you fresh. And that's Facebook's way of keeping fresh content on the page, and I'm glad they do that. That's fine. They've made us look into different things that we never would have done, and that's where the stars came from. And that's where, uh, if we ever get into the commercials, I'm sending the paperwork on that because they told me that's what to do. Some of you said don't do it. I know they're aggravating, but it's... That's Facebook's way of making money, I'm assuming, through the commercials. So, anyhow, you just have to do what you have to do. But anyway, be merciful because our little reels are so corny. And they're, you know, but that's what the <laughs> fun of them are. I, we don't ever want to do anything on copy time that your children can't watch or your children can't repeat. Uh, that's right. I, you know, if we tell a joke on here, I want your first grader to be able to tell it at school tomorrow and get a laugh because they're about a first grade level, some of them. But they're just And I still funny. can get them. Mama, you're smart. Mama gets all kinds of stuff. Did y'all hear her the other night? I was so impressed with her. I gave her a big hand clap after the video ended when I said, what's the, dif what's the difference between a fish and a piano? And that was the joke. And she I said, they better. both have scales. <laughs> I never would have thought of that. But Mama did. Well, the jokes, in case you didn't hear it the other night, the joke was you can't tune a fish. <laughs> corny, corny, but funny. So, uh, but she did get it. So Mama gets them. So check out that reel and see uh, how corny that is. <sighs> so we'll be doing those along the way. And we'll probably do them just like tonight, right before we go live. We'll do a reel. And because we've got the camera set up and we're sitting here doing them. Let's see what you folks are up to tonight. You know, it snowed again. Last night, we got an inch of snow again, and we had some rain and ice under it, and everything that melted off yesterday is quite white today, and not any of that left today here. We, mm -mm, no, it was cold. It's cold. It's January. Hey, Mary, how are you? 
uh, you guys are going fast again. Hey, Suzanne Moore. I think that's maybe a, a girl here from Jellico. Hello. Hey, Mary. How are you? Mary Jo? I'm having trouble. I'm going to have to get that iPad thing out and see if uh, I can see y'all's comments better. Some of y'all told me I could. Um, I'm just afraid the comments won't be the same as I see on there, but we'll check it out and see. Hey, Barbara, you're having, oh, having stew oh, in Texas. Barbara Buckner, that sounds wonderful. I love stew. That's one of our staples around here is a good uh, stew. Like, I like different kinds of stew. Um, I like, you know, just your basic, when you make a, a roast and you cut it up and make stew or stew beef. Or sometimes I'll just make it with um, better than bouillon to give that beef flavor, but it's just really vegetables with that flavoring in there. Uh, what other kind of we make, Mom? Chicken. We make chicken into a stew sometime. Yeah, we we eat a lot of soups and stew. We do like soup. I'm gonna make some more soup. No snow. Elizabeth says no sn snow in Louisiana, but tomorrow will be in the 30s and the 40s. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be cold. We're getting 17 tonight. Hey, Brenda Creekmore, making a German chocolate cake. And, Brenda, where'd you go? Making a German chocolate cake and some fun cake pops. Brenda Creekmore, she is um, local here. We've been friends for a thousand years at least. And uh, yeah, she makes like wonderful it. things. She's the one that got me the offset spatula. I always mention Brenda gave me this. And she's a phenomenal baker. We have some very talented folks here in our little town. Uh, hey, Lisa. Hey, Fern. Are you just now getting on there, Fern Kilgore? I think when it says is watching, it means you just started the video. I don't think it's a comment, really. Hey, Linda. Having homemade soup oh, oh it is that time in it? it you know i don't care what you say homemade soup in january sounds better than homemade soup in july it tastes the same and it's delicious but there's just seasons for foods you know there's just certain seasons that brings out your i guess your good feelings of food the soups and stuff's in the winter and, but yeah. we eat hot food year round but it just seems like you know, like hamburgers and hot dogs, that's summer kind of stuff, but I'll eat them in the winter too. But it just seems like we have categorized foods into certain yeah. seasons, doesn't it? Uh, it says, we are having gumbo. Who is that? I have half the gumbo. Uh, Lan Linnell, I have always wanted to do a good gumbo. Mama's not a big fish person, but I've always wanted to do a good gumbo. Um if anybody's got a good gumbo recipe out there, send it to us, and I might give it a shot. The only thing is, I would want to get fresh seafood for it, and it may be harder to get here. Oh, Wendy Miller. Barbecue ribs, baked potatoes. Wendy, where do you live? Where <laughs> you want to go to her house? Corn and dinner rolls tonight. Oh. Wendy Miller. Now you've got me on the ribs. I love Dr. Pepper ribs. You've got ribs in the freezer. You could have fished. Mama, you said the magic words. Maybe we could do that for this weekend. Mama makes um, the ribs a lot of times. I can have met them, but we put a Dr. Pepper in them. And they're delicious. They're delicious. Went to what's your recipe? Send us your recipe. What are you all eating? Yeah, but all the fresh vegetables to go... And the soup are coming in the summer. Yeah, Deborah, I agree. I agree. That's what, I'll, you know, I'll fix it sometime in the summer and say, look at all these fresh vegetables. You've got to make soup. I love a good hearty soup in the summer. But it seems like, you know, when you think about hearty meals, like soups and stews and all that, it seems like it's more of a wintertime thing. I always crave homemade soup. Nancy, I do too. In the summer and and then ice cream in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that makes perfect sense to me. And I didn't even get to try my snow cream. And there wasn't enough snow last night, fresh snow, to do it. It says, you need to make chicken and sausage gumbo. No, oh, Cynthia. Wait, whoa, whoa. Cynthia Gardner. Can you give me that recipe? Will you share that with me? Sausage and chicken, and chi and chicken gumbo. That would be a good starter for me. I've never made a gumbo. Never. Barbecue pork chops green. Oh, Pamela. Greens and potatoes and cheese. 
and butter. Oh, I love barbecue pork chops too. Uh, meatloaf make. Oh, but their skins are starving me to death. They made with a good plate of food here. Um, we make plenty of soups and stews and chili. Uh, upstate New York. Oh, it is. It, what is your wind chill? Oh, yeah. Cold, cold. Uh, I made your Hasselback potatoes and chicken. Loved it. Are they not the best, those Hasselback potatoes? I had the, the Hasselback potatoes last night, and they, I had been wanting those. Um, and they're different. People will say, well, what's the difference out in a baked potato? I don't know. I don't know what changes. It's just the, uh, the, the browning of it and the way it bakes it. And then you have those little, you got that crunch and you got that tender, tender inside. It's like the difference between a, a cooked potato and a french fry, basically. Uh, hey Pam, uh, we ate macaron, macaroni and chicken. Is that what that said? It's got home chicken and rice, I believe she said. I love chicken and rice. You know, I've got into a little thing. When I do meal prep, it says, that's what I make. Chicken and smoked sausage gumbo. Pat, send me a recipe. You can PM it to me or you can just put it on here for everybody. Lima beans with sausage and some ham pieces. Rice and cornbread. Oh, Gwen. Who oh, y'all making everything sound so good? You don't feel like going to the store hungry. <laughs> really don't do that. that. If you if you have... <laughs> you want everything you see. <laughs> you will spend a fortune. I mean, you'll be walking around that store and you'll look at uh, anything. Artichoke hearts. And you'll think, man, those look good. <laughs> I go, I hit the fruit, and I say, oh, those oranges look good, mm, those apples look good, mm, I'll get bananas, and I come home, and I have a friend who says that people just buy bananas so we can slowly watch them turn brown and then throw them away. <laughs> I think we do sometimes. <laughs> now, I bought these yesterday. Green is gold. And they were green, 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 and look, they're y'all, y'all, y'all today, so... These are dull, but now they were green yesterday. I thought those will last a while. But they're already bright, yeah. They're already bright, y'all, and there comes a the brown spot. And They're already taste like bananas real Mama bad. won't eat them past today. This would be about as done as she wants her bananas, ain't it, Mama? Yeah. Do you, you don't like them brown at all, do you? It's like fish. I don't like fish. It tastes like fish. I don't bananas like that them. taste like bananas. <laughs> She's... Mama's favorite is golden delicious apples. Yeah. So when I find a good golden delicious apple, I always pick up some for Mama because if if we don't have any, and right now we are blessed with apples. I guess we still got Christmas apples, but you know we we cut them all, a lot of them up, and uh, fried pies. We've had them for pies, breakfast. We made a breakfast of apples. You all seen that? What we had? I made turkey lasagna and sausage. <sighs> With garlic bread. Oh, that sounds good. Who was All except that? the garlic bread. All think? except the garlic bread. It still sounds good to me. Rashonda Wiggins, that sounds good to me. I, I can eat garlic, and people have asked me to explain it. I have a friend who was in the hospital over garlic powder. Uh, he's really allergic to it, too. I, I don't know. I can't digest the garlic, and then it makes me very ill. I don't understand it. I can eat minced garlic fried and I can't eat garlic powder in say a soup or something if it's boiled good it has to be really broken down and cooked but like garlic on bread or garlic sprinkled on top mm, garlic in a cheese ball that's when I discovered I was allergic to it now you're you're talking about somebody who used to pour garlic powder on everything on soups and I mean, I would put garlic powder in everything I could. Not anymore. It started turning red and getting sick when I was baking garlic bread one time for mm -hmm. spaghetti. I did. And Just smelling we... it made me real. But now I can eat minced garlic. I don't understand the logic behind that, and but I can. I'm with Mama. I only like cold something. I couldn't. <laughs> I wish I wish I had a side screen I could see on like have ten I comments have instead of one two. Of them, uh, smart boards stuck up for a great big and in bold letters where I could read it. Uh, wait, let's see what this says. It says Beth says she saw a post last night where a lady 
fried noodles. Is that what that said, Beth? Did I did I misread that? I'm gonna be so embarrassed if you didn't say that. <laughs> fried noodles. Oh, I saw a post last night. A lady fries her noodles. She didn't share the recipe, but I take it it left over from cook. Fried noodles. That would be good. I think. I think I froze y'all up. Sorry. Speaking of seeing post, I am so excited. I just saw a post from Mama Sue from Mama Sue's Southern Kitchen. Mama Sue took us under her wing uh, when we first started doing cookbooks, and I just PM'd her and I said, "Hey, we have you know coffee time with John and Mama, and we're going to start selling our church cookbook. Can you help me with some details on the church cookbook?" And she said, "Give me a call." I'll explain it. And she did. And she was just so, so sweet. sweet and so gracious. And uh, we just become fast friends because she is the real deal, folks. Uh, when she says share the salt and light, she shares the salt and light. She's a wonderful yeah. lady. But she posted, I'm going to get emotional. Uh, <laughs> she posted she's cancer free. Yeah. You know, she had her surgery yesterday. The pathology came back and she's cancer free. That is some answer prayers right there. That is some answer prayers. And uh, she said the same thing. She gave God all the glory. And uh, she's well on her way to recovery. And uh, she does have to have some more chemo for preventative. But as of right now, the pathology says she's cancer free. Let's just give the Lord a great big shout out for that. Thank you, Lord, for taking care of her. That means so much. And you all have been praying for her. And I know a lot of you all on here watch her too because you all say so. And that was just awesome news. She is such a such a sweet lady. Can't wait till she's a hundred percent back and sharing that wonderful testimony. Uh, what a what a special time that'll be. So that is good news. Jim says yes, you fry spaghetti and and leftovers, and sometimes you fry. Jim, where'd you go? Come back. It's, you know, when y'all roll up, y'all don't just roll up, you jump up. Because I try to catch you, and I, I pull you back down, and you're gone. That's it says, yes, thing. you fry spaghetti with left leftovers, and sometimes you try it with eggs. It's like a frittata. Well, Jim Bo Boise, that sounds pretty good to me. I've never tried it. I don't know that I've ever heard of it. Did I freeze y'all up? I think I did. Tell us something about each of you, where you worked, when your dad passed away. Something personal. We love. I, let's see. Gigi. Uh, Mama worked at the school cafeteria. Yeah. Uh, for years, she became the manager, and she fed all the children. And boy, she made sure everybody ate. And uh, she did a wonderful job there. I have worked different places. I worked at a restaurant for years. Um, I managed a restaurant morning shift there. We had tons of, and everything was homemade. And it was sort of like the town uh, dining room. Everybody came there. You know, when people invited people over to their house, they would normally say, uh, I'll meet you at the restaurant. And we'll come back and have coffee or something, you know. So I did that, and I have done different things. I've taught school. I've substituted school. I uh, worked at a radio station. My first job ever was uh, working in a radio station, doing the commercial lineup, doing the office managing. I didn't work on the air, but I did put the commercials in, took the payments and all that stuff at the front. That was the first job I had. Uh, I worked at uh, a motel front desk one time I worked at the hospital uh, and it wasn't that I couldn't keep a job it's just that I worked all kinds of places and you know I worked all those places and I never did fill out an application I never did fill out an application and even the job I have now I got the job before I filled out the application in fact I had worked there several weeks and they said we didn't get an application on you you're going to have to fill out one so we can put it in your file uh, it was just word of mouth, people who knew me and people who seen me. And they said, hey, well, they're hiring so and so. And I'd go and do it kind of an on-the-spot interview. And uh, I got the job at the, hot at the hotel because it was connected to the restaurant. And I got the job at the hospital because the lady who was over the, 
the hiring, knew me from the restaurant. She said, why don't you come work for me? And at first it started out one night a week. And I said, okay, I could do that. And then quickly it was two and then three. It was full time. You had three jobs at one time. I did. <laughs> I was crazy. I was crazy to try to do that. Uh, so that's a little bit about us. Dad, he probably had jobs. Mama will have to tell you about them. But my whole life he worked for Coca-Cola. He worked for Coca-Cola for 30 years and then he retired. And he, he loved it. He was... Um, most of the time, and only because I got I got in trouble over those screwdrivers all the time, he worked on repairing the machines. So he would go and repair the um, machines, the ones in the restaurants, the ones, the cans, the bottles, whatever it was. And he had this little pocket protector thing, and it was Coca-Cola, and he had these little screwdrivers in it with magnets on the end of them, and they were tiny. We still have them. And uh, they were tiny little screwdrivers. And, of course, I liked them. And he would put them on his dresser. And I remember one night I had one of them. And I heard him Working say... Working on a car or something, a little car. <laughs> I did take stuff apart every once in a while and put it back together. And he, I heard him say, Johnny, have you got my screwdriver? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Do not, man, I have to have these. If I get to work and you got, mm, I didn't touch them no more. But that year at Christmas, Santa Claus did bring me some little screwdrivers so I could play with them myself. Didn't he, Mama? Yeah. And it kept, probably kept me from getting whipped. <laughs> Thanks, Santa, because I could have got beat down pretty good. Oh, he wouldn't hurt you. I used to DJ at a Christian radio station, Tracy Bell. Um, a couple of years ago, so much fun. They are fun. They are fun. And you know, and I didn't know this, but when I first started there, there is like a, I don't know what they call it now, but like a wire that they once will make announcement inside the radio station for you to talk about. And you'd hear stuff just a few minutes before, like big news would come and say, this just in, going with this in five minutes, you know, whatever. Uh, I thought that was interesting. And some of my friends worked there as DJs. So we have stories from the radio station. Hello, John and Mama from Johnson City. Hey, Angie. Love, love, love Johnson City. Um, a friend of mine just moved up there about six or eight months ago, and we were talking. You know, Johnson City is that special little town. It's it's like a big metropolitan city, like Knoxville or some other place. You know, Knoxville, in case you don't know where that is, it's a, uh, you've probably heard of it, it's a, you know, it's a, a big city in East Tennessee. But Johnson City has got almost everything they have, but it's just compact and it's a little college town. And it's, I love Johnson City. Worked up there quite a bit uh, with my current job. Uh, had to go up there and stay for several weeks uh, doing that. And I just fell in love with Johnson City. Um, who else is on here? Hey, Paula. Hi, Gwen. Hello, folks. So that's a little bit about what we've done. Uh, we've done other things. I've done all kinds of jobs and stuff. Hello, John and Mama from Made Missouri. Thank you, Karen. We love that you're here with us. We love doing the lives and getting to talk with you all and just getting to sit and be real. And then we can talk back and forth. And that's and when we don't do a live now, um, and we're doing a video... Y'all will notice me. Next time you we do a video, watch me and see how many times I look at the phone to see what y'all are saying. You know, <laughs> this is not a live. This is a video. Oh. Hey, Mama. Oh, no. What? Knock, knock. Oh, who's there? Dishes. Dishes who? Dishes, the end of the joke. This is the end of the joke. Uh -uh. Oh. oh, that was a good one. Somebody sent that in. I thought it was kind of cute. Yeah. Dishes. Dishes, the end of the joke. Uh, hey, Brenda. It's cold. Cold as kraut in Greensboro, Alabama. Yes, yeah. Brenda. Cold as kraut. We say that all the time. Do y'all say cold as kraut? Uh, <laughs> we say a lot of crazy cold as, It's cold as kraut out there. Mm-hmm. I'm a teacher in my 19th year with Kristen, well, bless, bless you, because that teaching business is hard. 
I substituted while I was in college. And I thought, well, I kind of like this. I think I'll do a little, I don't think teaching would be a good thing. I guess I was the opposite. Once I got my own room and my own kids, it was worse than being a substitute. Substitute, I could, you know, one day, two days a week, I was gone. Then when I got my own little junior, little uh, juniors, and uh, <laughs> they were mean, and I had to go face them every week. And here I was, every hour and a half, we were on the block system. Every hour, hour and a half, it was. Me and my personality and 30 more personalities coming in to try to get to know each other for the day. I enjoyed it, but when something else came along, I was glad to move on. I respect you teachers. I have lots of friends that are teachers. Oh, yeah. And just the idea of, you know, all those little minds that y'all put knowledge into it's just amazing to me teachers I mean, are special people that deals with and i wasn't issues. special because i couldn't hang with the teachers it was too big of a job for me i just i enjoyed it i really did and i still enjoy teaching sunday school and i enjoy working with the youth and i love kids but it was a big responsibility and uh so kudos to all you teachers out there y'all do a great job and i just don't know you're underpaid and there's not enough funds to buy the things you need and y'all put your own money into it it's just amazing to me uh, what you know and then teachers are surely you know they develop our kids they really do mm. it's cold as crowd here in corbin Ros <laughs> rosanna yeah it is and she sent it down here to us i believe yeah Ros rosanna you always supposed to get that snow and ice last night. You let it trickle right on down here to Jellico. Oh, hello from North Carolina. Hi, hey, Kathy Johnson. We love that you're here watching. We love that you're part of the of the uh, Coffee Time family. Yeah. Folks, we don't have anything else to do except show you my uh, cold supper. Now Mama, you're going to have to heat it up. I can put that in the microwave and... 10 seconds, mama, and it'll be warm. See, one thing about I like to eat, but I love to talk better. Y'all, I believe you love talking better than you do. I like think it. I do too, because I think I'll eat in a little while. Mm -hmm. I usually mean to sit here and eat, but then I start looking at comments. You say it's all down, but you don't hush talking. If there's talking, they wouldn't get a chance to say a word. Good thing they're writing. <laughs> that hurts your feelings. Mama, you're going to hurt my feelings from my friends. <laughs> it's 100% true. Sometimes I have to tell myself, hush, you've talked enough. Move on. <laughs> Sometimes this may be too much information. <laughs> as long as it's about you. Sometimes me and Mama will watch our videos. We don't watch them all the time, but sometimes you know, we'll just watch them. And I'll say, oh, Lord, won't he hush? He's just talking, Mama say. I know, I try to tell him. <laughs> That's just because we're real. If you were really here, you'd get this same stuff. Me talking. Yeah. Mama trying to feed you. If you were here, the only difference is Mama would be running around and saying, here, I made this cake. Here, you want some of this? Here, you want some coffee? That makes uh, me think I'd like to have some cake. I need to fix something. What are you going to fix, Mama? I don't know. Let's go ahead and commit right here in front of everybody. So that... I don't know. I don't commit me to nothing. If she think. says it in front of y'all, I said, now, Mama, you told them you was going to make that. No, I didn't. I said, I've been And she'll say, I didn't say. I said, yep, you did, Mama. You That'd usually be end up saying it is what it is. I just do it so you'll be committed in front yeah. of the folks. Hey, Linda Bailey. How are you all? Linda says she loves uh, to hear me talk. Mama says you'll get over it, Linda, after a while. She's heard it for years. We love being here with <laughs> he you. He talks so much and says Mama so much. I must have been dreaming it the other night. I thought he was hollering at me. <laughs> what did I say, Mama? Mama! Mama! <laughs> Oh, Lordy. 
But I also dream the dog barks at me sometimes to let her out. So you're right along with the dog. So you're dreaming of me or the dog one barking at you. <laughs> yeah. Hello from uh, Clarksville, Tennessee. Yeah. Hey, Sandra. I like Clarksville. Been there many times with work and just driving through. Hi, Kristen. Your mama is the best, I pray. My only son and I have the same type of relationship. Well, Kristen, it's a blessing to have good parents, and I just feel like I've been truly blessed. And, you know, and uh, we've always gotten along my dad and mom and me, and it's just, it's just been the three of us. Um, so, uh, when dad was alive, we would sit and laugh and carry on. Now, we would argue once in a while and have a different opinion, and dad would fuss a little bit. He was more fussy sometimes. Sometimes he would be fussy, I think, just to have something to do. But funny thing about Dad is me and him would sit and have an argument over the silliest of little things. Like, one time we put a step in the carport. <laughs> and uh, it was up against the wall. And Mama said, I don't think a square step will look right in there, or a rectangle step. And I said, well, you could always just put one of those rounded ones, you know, just like a half circle, just in front of the door. She said, let's try that. Oh, Dad didn't want it. Mm -mm, he said. No, that'd be silly. Just put a square step in there. Well, Mama's brother came to do it. Mama said, I just kind of want if there's some way to make it round, but I guess you really can't. He's why sure can. So he goes down to the barn and finds a thin piece of wood that he could bend, and he bent her a step. He poured it, let it set, smoothed <laughs> it out. Beautiful step. And it was better because it was rounded. It didn't have corners, you know. Dad came home and said, I know you would do that. I knew that step. And it wasn't two days later. <laughs> I heard him on the phone. He didn't know me or Mama either one could hear him. He said, well, we got that step put in the in the, in the the carports, and it's a whole lot better. He said, we just made it round. It's a whole lot better than having all them squares and stuff out there. And that boy, he, said, <laughs> he said, her brother, done it. he done a good job. He done it just like I would have done it. <laughs> so we would often behind his back would say remember the step you know he's probably happier about what he's letting on and then the front step out there he didn't know nothing about it and we I had him to fix it it was just like he wanted it too just like he said fix it Abigail Mary says that she used to talk a lot and her dad said that they should have named her Gabigail Gabigail <laughs> that's cute I like it that reminds me of another funny story about Dad. He got a puppy one time, and he was debating on naming it two names. I don't even remember what one of them was, but the second one was uh, Gabby. He was calling her Gabby. He said, I don't know whether to call her Gabby or whatever that other one was. So we talked about it around here a day or two, and he decided Abby that he was, he was going to name her Abby or Gabby or something. So we were driving up the road, and I said, well, how's Abby doing? He said, her name is Gabby. I said, oh, I didn't know we made it official. Well, now her official name is Gabrielle. <laughs> <laughs> I just call her Gabby for short. I about wrecked. I got to laughing so hard I couldn't see. Because he'd gone from just deciding between Gabby and Abby and then all of a sudden, it was uh, her official name is Gabrielle, but she wasn't. She didn't have papers. It was just him being him, just being silly. And I like. He said, "Watch this road. You're gonna wreck." Mm -hmm. So from then on, her name was Gabrielle. <laughs> and if anybody said anything but Gabby, Mom or I, one would say, "Well, her official name is Gabrielle." <laughs> so we have all kinds of stories like that with Dad. He was a hoot. He was a hoot. Uh, but her Everybody official name him. is Gabrielle. It was just funny coming from him. Hey, Dan Rogers says carrot cake. That's all you said, Dan. I'll take oh, carrot I cake. Like hey, oh, I know what he's doing. He's telling you something to make, Mama. Yeah, Thank cake. you, Dan. I think carrot cake would be wonderful, Mama. Mm -hmm. And it would be appropriate. Easter's coming. <laughs> we'll like to Easter and try carrot cake. We'll try carrot cake at Easter, she said, Dan. I agree with you. Carrot cake with cream cheese icing. Mmm. Or spice cake with cream cheese icing is good. 
Folks, we've kept you on here a long Way time. Way too long. That's enough. Mom, this is hush. Folks, we're going to say good night. Y'all have a great night. Find you something good to eat. Make you some memories. And have a good time. Enjoy this weather. I know I complain a little bit about it, but... A little. <laughs> I'm always the one that wants it to hurry and get spring so it'll get too hot. And then I say I want it to get fall because it's too hot. Then I fall get... You want winter because it's cold. I do enjoy winter. I love, I love all the seasons. I even say sometimes, I wish it could get hot so I can... I'm tired of complaining about it being cold. I'm ready to complain about it being too hot. I just really enjoy it, whatever the Lord sends us. I really do enjoy it. Try to find something good about it. And just, you know, live and laugh and enjoy yourself. So y'all have a good night. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for all the wonderful hearts and uh, all the things. I see all the, look at that, Mama. Those that's hearts a, are for you, I'm sure. Pretty. Thank you all so much. And y'all have a great night. Say good night, Mama. Good night, Mama. And God bless you all. Bye-bye.